Welcome to Reality Check Campaign 2022. I'm political specialist Sean Boyd. Each week we'll be unpacking the political headlines as the campaign season heats up. And as in years past, our analysts, Republican Dick Wadhams and Democrat Mike Dino will join me. We are just three weeks away from what will be a defining primary election for the Colorado Republican Party. Will the party of Trump or party of Reagan emerge? One of the races that will help determine that is the matchup between Ron Hanks and Joe O'Day to determine who takes on incumbent Senator Michael Bennett in November. Hanks is a state representative, military veteran, and Trumpian. Joe Day is a first-time candidate, businessman, and moderate. As you might expect, Hanks is an election denier. O'Day is not. But the issue that has created maybe the most friction in this race is abortion. Hanks supports a full ban. O'Day, some exceptions. With a Supreme Court decision on Roe v. Wade coming down and just uh, just as vote, voters cast their ballots, this one will be front and center. And O'Day has decided to attack mm. Hanks for being too conservative on this one. Will it work, Dick? Well, he's also attacking uh, Hanks on the fact that he's shifted his positions. Uh, Hanks ran for Congress in California a few years back, under a different name, by the way, Lauren Hanks. And he, had, he didn't have a pro-choice position, but he certainly had a much more uh, modified position with exceptions. So uh, it's more the consistency that, that uh, O'Day is attacking him on. Uh, but I will tell you, in the primary, O'Day's position will probably be a problem, because this is a pro-life party, and so he will have to get past that. But I think he's trying to, to negate whatever advantage Hanks would have on the, on the issue by attacking it, him on that. He's saying, I'm consistent, at least, yes. with my position, right. right? You know, Mike O'Day is clearly going after the unaffiliated voters mm -hmm. in the primary, and, you know, I'm sure he will be doing mm -hmm. that in the general election. So if he emerges as the winner here, how much of a threat is he to Bennett, especially with the political winds blowing against Democrats this election? Well, Sean, what I'm looking for is uh, two years ago, uh, now Senator John Hickenlooper got a heck of a lot of unaffiliated voters in the primary election. There were a lot of Democrats wringing their hands that Andrew Romanoff was going to make a huge upset. And John Hickenlooper attracted a, an inordinate amount of unaffiliated voters in that primary election. And so what I'll be looking for is, will Joe O'Day get those primary voters in his election for the primary? Because those voters followed Hick to the general election ballot box. And my hunch is, I don't think unaffiliated voters are going to be there in the droves they were for Hick. And that's not going to help him on election day on November 8th, if he happens to be the nominee. Certain that could help foretell what's going to happen exactly. this November. Mm -hmm. Coming up, we're going to talk about the Republican primary for Secretary of State, which has drawn, would you believe it, national attention. Welcome again to our campaign 2022 weekly reality check. Let's talk about a race that typically does not get a lot of attention, Secretary of State. Three Republicans are vying for a chance to take on Democratic incumbent Jenna Griswold. Tina Peters is the Mesa County clerk, criminally indicted on felony charges related to election security. Mike O'Donnell is a businessman and, like Peters, election denier. And Pam Anderson is a former Jefferson County clerk and not an election denier. So Mike, what chances, what are the chances that Peters wins, first of all, and then if she does, what impact do you think she's going to have on other races, the down ballot races? Well, first off, I think of all the extreme candidates that the Republicans have on the statewide ballot, I think she has the best chance. Now, what's interesting is this Thursday in prime time, the U.S. House of Representatives Democrats who, and, and some Republicans who form this January 6th committee have a prime time hearing at 6 p.m. Mountain Time. And uh, what's going to come out of that that influences this race? I mean, people think uh, that with Tina and Peters being an election denier, it, it is a huge negative for her in Colorado. Will this hearing, that'll be the first and maybe a few more, uh, will that further add to either her success or detract from her chances of winning? So I'm going to be looking to see how that plays into the race. But the bottom line is I think she has a chance of being the nominee, and I think Democrats in the general election here in Colorado will use that as an example of how extreme the Republican Party is here in Colorado. And she could help define the Republican mm -hmm. Party really here, which is what I was talking about earlier. You know, Dick, Dick the Secretary of State's race is maybe Republicans' best shot at retaking a statewide office. 
Did they blow it? And if so, what, what impact is this going to have on other races? Too? We could blow it, and it, that's unfortunate because Jenna Griswold is not qualified to be Secretary of State. She's a partisan hack. She has mismanaged the office. She can't keep uh, uh, senior staff in the office. And a lot of Democrats don't like her either. In fact, I think a lot of Democrats are very uncomfortable with her as Secretary of State, and they would like a more professional Secretary of State like Pam Anderson. But to your question, Sean, there is no doubt in my mind, if we nominate Tina Peters, we we not only lose Secretary of State's office, we will lose elections up and down the ticket because she will define the Republican Party. We have never nominated somebody who's been criminally indicted, is under FBI investigation, and somebody who resisted arrest and tried to kick a police officer. It's just, it's frankly, it's embarrassing to have somebody like that as a potential statewide nominee. So we'll see what happens. She's barred from running the election in Mesa she County. She can't even run, yeah, they can't, <laughs> she can't even run her own election, yes. <laughs> All right, coming up, we will look at the race for governor in Colorado and who wants to unseat Democrat Jared Polis. Welcome back to our weekly campaign 2022 reality check. We are focused on the upcoming primaries and a midterm election where nationwide the political winds are blowing against Democrats. Democratic incumbent governor Jared Polis is running for his second term this November and in three weeks we will learn which Republican he will face. Even if I were a betting person, I wouldn't wager a guess on who will win this one. The race pits Heidi Ganahl, a University of Colorado region, against Greg Lopez, a former Parker mayor. Dick, how do you see this one playing out? Heidi should win this primary. I mean, Greg Lopez has been tenacious, I will tell you. He's been running for four years. Wherever two, more, two and more Republicans are gathered, he's been there. But I think Heidi has done a much better job putting together a real campaign, and I think she's a, a very attractive attractive candidate from the standpoint that I think a woman Republican is a is a much more of an advantage in this race. And uh, so I think she will win the, the primary. What about the general election? Will Polis be able to uh, buck the midterm curse where, against the party in power? Yeah, I mean, I think he's hands down the winner in November 8th. I mean, he is so doing such a great job of one uh, addressing the issues of the day. I mean, even when the infant formula issue came up, I mean, he's like, well, we're going to get in on that and address that and, <laughs> and handle it. And uh, certainly as it relates to crime and the economy and gas and, and all that stuff, I mean, he, he's got an answer for it. Uh, I mean, he's not saying that's somebody else's, you know, he's not saying that's somebody else's job. He's saying it's my job and I'm taking care of it. So, President Biden can learn something from Jared. Oh, I agree. Who, <laughs> Biden I agree. doesn't take responsibility from anything. Well, it's, you know, and, 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 and uh, I think that's why Governor Polis has, has stayed yeah. ahead of the game because he has really been there when when there's n answers needed. Yeah. All right. Coming up, we're going to talk about why this midterm is historic in Colorado. This is a reality check on campaign 2022, and this is the first election since redistricting, which gave Colorado an eighth seat in Congress. Voters will be casting ballots for the first time this month in Colorado's new Congressional District 8. It's one of several congressional districts with competitive Republican primaries. Incumbents Lauren Boebert, Ken Buck, and Doug Lamborn all face primary challenges this year. So Dick, Will they survive? And what is up with all these challenges? You know, both parties seem to love to take on incumbents in their own party now <laughs> across the nation and here in Colorado. And of course, Boebert got there by defeating an incumbent that nobody saw coming. Um, no, I think all the incumbents are, are safe who are being challenged. Uh, but I do think the 8th Congressional District is very competitive, and that is a real Republican opportunity, especially if we nominate the right candidate. Um, <laughs> uh, and but we, it, it could easily be lost if we d nominate the wrong candidate. So. In all these races, you have these, you know, the Trump candidate mm -hmm. uh, versus the traditional, yes. more traditional Republican. Yes. Including this this eighth congressional. Do you, do you see any of these districts flipping, Mike? And and who do you see as having the advantage in the eighth? Well, I'll speak to the eighth. I think that uh, that is the best chance for Republicans uh, to win a seat, the new seat that was added after uh, the redistricting and, and the census. It's a uh, seat that uh, the Dems don't have much of an edge in, and boy, it doesn't look good for Democrats nationally, and it's not improving, and that's a seat that can go to Republicans. What's interesting in that seat right now is third-party money. Uh, Barb Kirkmeyer is getting funded considerably over $200,000 by Americans for Prosperity, and um, they're backed by the Koch brothers. 
Um, and then we see the Dems kind of playing around trying to get a contest between Lori Sane, a very right-wing conservative Weld County Commissioner against Adira Carabello, who's the Democratic nominee. So that would be the best matchup. That gives the <laughs> Dems a chance. Uh, but Barb Kirkmeyer, if she's the nominee, uh, the Dems have their work cut out for them. Yeah, she's tough. Yeah, very respected as well. Mm -hmm. Whoever wins these primaries yeah. will determine how much money I think comes in to Colorado too. No doubt about sure. it, Sean. I mean, if if the if the if the eighth looks uh, very vulnerable because of who we nominate, the the national money will not come in. Otherwise, I think there will be a lot of money come in to support uh, Kirk Meyer or from the, that matter Coleman, Jan Coleman, the other. Uh, and O'Day, yeah. and O'Day in the Senate race. Yeah, and O'Day well. in the Senate race. Yes. All right. Well, we will have plenty to talk about as this election season continues. Thanks for watching. We'll be back with another Campaign 2022 Reality Check next week.